the nucleus. The nucleus controls the activities of the cell in that inside the nucleus you've got the DNA. The reason that the DNA is in there is because it's protected in there. And so this is um, an electron microscope picture, an electron micrograph of the nucleus. Um, the nucleolus is here. We'll talk about that in a little bit. But the general idea here is that you've got DNA and then you've got this membrane around it to protect it and keep it safe from all the enzymes that are out here. So this contains the DNA. That's the, whoops, that's the important part of um, what the nucleus does. Okay, inside the nucleus, the DNA can either be spread out or it can be condensed, coiled up tightly. So when it's spread out like this, it's not dividing. So in non-dividing cells, DNA is spread out with proteins attached to it. The reason that it's spread out um, when it's not dividing is that you're going to need to read it and use it at some point. So if you need to use this little piece, it's spread out. You can just go use it. You have enzymes that can go and make it into RNA, and then the RNA can leave the nucleus and do what it needs to do. When it's all coiled up like this, the only time you're going to want to coil it really tightly is when you want to separate it carefully. Can you imagine this pile of spread out, delicate, teeny little threads of DNA. Can you imagine trying to separate that? It would be impossible to separate without breaking it. So this, the DNA in dividing cells is condensed or coiled up. It's wrapped around its proteins. I have a very cool movie I'll show you in class on that. So here's what it looks like. This is an important picture. I'm going to move this. So here's the DNA double helix that we talked about. Um, in the bio biochemistry section, and so you've got your sugars, phosphates along the outsides here, and then your bases are the rungs here. If you picture that double helix and you coil it around some proteins, these pro proteins are called histone proteins, and you coil them around these, you coil them like this, coil, 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 then you coil the coils around themselves and then coil those coils around themselves and coil them again, you're going to get something that is called super coiled. So the name makes sense. It's coiled super duper. So that's super coiled DNA. So the DNA is wrapped around histone proteins. So this thing down here is called a chromosome. A chromosome is a molecule of DNA and this one, th at this time, it's at actually all coiled up. So a chromosome consists of DNA and its histone proteins. So DNA forms condensed chromosomes when the nucleus starts to divide. In other words, when you're making a new cell and you've got to replicate your DNA, um, well, actually you have to do that ahead of time. But then when you're about to separate the DNA out, you've got to coil it up. And so here's just another um, picture of the same thing coiled here, and you can see this part. I have a really good video, but you won't be able to see it on this. So I'll show that to you in class. Okay, chromatin. Chromatin is defined as the total collection of DNA molecules and associated proteins in the nucleus. Whereas a chromosome is an individual DNA molecule and its associated proteins. These two vocabulary words are sometimes a little confusing because in the olden days we said this was spread out chromosomes when I was a kid. Um, and we said that a chromosome is a condensed thing that looks like, you know, sort of like this. That would be a chromosome, and if it were all spread out, you would call it a chromatin. That's not true anymore. Now we call chromatin all of the molecules of DNA, whether they're spread out or condensed, and we call a chromosome one molecule of DNA. And again, it doesn't matter if it's condensed or spread out. So in people, we have 46 chromosomes. If you count all those chromosomes all together, the whole thing would be called chromatin. Each cell has a fixed number of chromosomes, and I just said this, humans have 46. What does DNA do? DNA is the hereditary material of the cell. You already knew that. Here's a definition that I've given you before, um, I think during a movie or something that we watched, but now you have it for real. A gene is a section of DNA that codes for a protein. And so remember we said that you, when I look at you, you're your proteins, and you also have carbs and lipids put together in a certain way, put together by your enzymes, and your enzymes are proteins. So when I look at you, I'm looking at your proteins and your protein products, and all of those proteins and all the enzymes that are proteins are coded for in DNA, and those coding parts are called genes. 
So genes control cells, characteristics, everything. Okay, from DNA to protein, we have a whole unit on this. That's how important it is. But I'm going to give you a preview right now. So here's DNA, and it's found in the nucleus. DNA makes RNA. So I don't know why. Okay, so DNA makes this RNA. The RNA is in blue. And then it says pre-RNA and RNA. The reason is because you actually snip little sections out that you don't use. We'll talk about that later. And then put the good sections together, and there's your messenger RNA. And then that thing actually winds out and leaves the nucleus. It's still in the cell. This whole yellow thing is the cell. Once it does that, it goes to a ribosome, the little dots that I showed you earlier. And the RNA has a special code, which we'll do in a couple units. And it makes this thing, a polypeptide. Each of these little beads is an amino acid. When you put all those amino acids together, you've got a polypeptide. Another name for a polypeptide, once it's folded, is a protein. Yay, and so that protein can do a million different things. Well, depending. That one particular protein has a certain function, but there's lots and lots of different proteins coded for by lots and lots of different genes in your DNA. Movie that I'll show you later. Another movie. Okay, nuclear envelope. Um, the crazy thing, look at this lipid bilayer. A nuclear membrane is actually two lipid bilayers. So four lipid layers. Here's one lipid bilayer. Here's another lipid bilayer. Altogether, you've got two lipid bilayers, which is kind of cool. So it's a double membrane. Double membrane surrounding the nucleus. That's the nuclear envelope. It contains nuclear pores, so that's a hole. Um, you can see the nuclear pores in here. And then you can actually see them right in here, too. So, oops, here's a good one. You can see the path right there. So it contains nuclear pores for materials to enter and leave the nucleus. So the cell membranes, the nuclear membrane will only let certain things go through. It's connected to the rough endoplasmic reticulum. So the pink stuff here is the nuclear membrane, um, and here's a pore where things can go through. This is actually um, the endoplasmic reticulum connected right to the outer nuclear membrane, and these dots are ribosomes. So it, it encloses, remember the cytosol? This is the goop that's in the cell. It has a special name when it's in the, um, inside the nucleus. So you can call it the nucleoplasm. I'm actually probably not going to use that term much. Nucleolus. So that sounds like a cutesy nucleus. So it is. It's a, well, not really, but it's this thing inside the nucleus. So here's your nucleus. Kind of cut back. The nucleolus is this thing inside, and it's responsible for making ribosomes. So here's a ribosome. So the nucleolus is inside the nucleus. It makes ribosomes. And remember, when a, rib a ribosome is out here, right? See all those dots? Those things are ribosomes. So those little dots. <laughs> Downstairs, buddy. So those things are ribosomes, and the function of We're a ribosome. There and else <laughs> Hold on, buddy. Hold on. Oh. I'm going to pause. Alrighty, sorry about that. So ribosomes make proteins. A cell can have um, one to three nucleoli, and it disappears when the cell divides. Now here's the reason: you don't need to make ribosomes when the cell's dividing. All you have to do is separate your DNA really, really carefully. So you, the nucleolus disappears because it's not making any more ribosomes anymore. So here's what happens with a nucleolus. A ribosome, here's, let's move this, a ribosome is actually made out of two things. It's made out of protein, and it's made out of a special type of RNA called ribosomal RNA. The RNA that we are showing here is a different type. It's called messenger RNA. So I have a whole unit on this. I'll show you later. But the thing that happens here, you've got DNA in here, right? Lots and lots and lots of DNA. Some of the... Eric, give me two more minutes, okay? So DNA makes RNA, and it makes several different types of RNA. One of the types of RNA is ribosomal RNA, so rRNA. And that's right in here. And so the DNA is winding through here, but in this little area where the DNA, different chromosomes get together for the parts that make ribosomal RNA, and they make the ribosomal RNA right here. Another part might make a messenger RNA that will go out to a ribosome like this, 
make a protein and some of those proteins are used in here. So then in here the um, ribosomes are assembled so you'll have the big subunit like this and the little subunit and they're assembled and then they'll come back out and be put together to make the um, to make the ribosomes. So the nucleolus makes ribosomes both with protein that was started here but actually made out here and the rRNA which is actually physically made in here. Cytoplasm, I think I'm going to stop here. So you've um, just learned about the nucleus. Bye.